Hi everyone, Ed Naturalist Clinton here. Uh, I've got this, my trusty old view box, and this, my dip net. Uh, and we're here close to the Blue Dasher Bog property. Uh, and we're gonna see what's going on in these little sidewater pools here. There are a few species of frog that overwinter as tadpoles and big tadpoles like this. Based on the markings, the lateral markings, this looks like it's a leopard frog tadpole, but we'll consult the book when we get home to be sure. But really cool to see lots of tadpoles moving around in the water today. Oh, yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Here's what we came for. That buddy. This is a heck of a specimen. So this is a central mud minnow, and this looks like a big female to me. Um, and mud minnows are really great. Um, there's some cool things about their biology that makes them really unique. Number one is who they're related to. Um, central mud minnows' closest relatives are the pikes. So northern pike and this thing are related, which is really awesome. And one thing to remember too is that this is a really big one. So usually all the bigger they get, about as long as your pointer finger. But this one is quite a bit larger than that. Again, helping us know it's a female. Mud minnows also can tolerate really poor water conditions, really warm water, really cold water, um, very oxygen poor water as well. So you can find these things in nice roadside ditches like this. It might not look like they hold a heck of a lot of anything. So mud minnows are rough fish. They're not what we would call a game fish. And a fish have a really important role to play in an ecosystem. Um, a fish like this is going to be a food fish, um, but it's also going to be part of that ecosystem. It's going to be eating insects. Think about mosquito larvae. These things hawk down a whole bunch of mosquito larvae. Um, but they're going to be food for herons. They're going to be food for our diving ducks. Think about mergansers. Um, but they're a really important part of this ecosystem. And even if there's not any sort of economic value to a fish like a mud minnow, um, there certainly is personal value and there's certainly uh, a lot of joy on my face when I see a mud minnow. These are sometimes the top predators in their systems. Um, they are an ambush predator, so they hide in the weeds and the muck, hence the name mud minnow. There are three species in the U.S. Uh, Eastern mud minnow, central mud minnow, which is this one, and then a really unique one, Olympic mud minnow, which actually only exists on the Olympic Peninsula in Washington. Central mud minnows um, are active for long periods of time. It can tolerate cold water, like I mentioned. Uh, up to 40 degree water they'll tolerate and they'll be active, which is much cooler than a lot of fishes uh, will remain active. Beautiful fish. They spawn really early, so this is post-spawn for them. A um, couple of weeks ago, the end of April is when they typically spawn up here for us. So another really splashy, but really awesome mud minnow. Mud minnows uh, can breathe air, which is a really awesome thing. Um, helps them survive in these kind of backwater, maybe low oxygen environments. Uh, also means you can find them in a number of different places. So one last look at our mud minnow. Send them back. So if you're trying to find your own mud minnows, because they aren't just in Northern Minnesota, they're throughout our state. A um, couple of things you might need. Trust the old dip net works pretty well. Um, and then you want to try to find habitat that looks like this, something with a little bit of reed, something with a little bit of mud maybe. They, do, they are found in other habitats too, but something like this is perfect for mud minnows. Hope you enjoyed that little video on mud minnows. Uh, until next time, we'll see you in the box.